dear fellow teachers, I would like to share with you a couple of ideas on how you can simplify um, your preparation of online resources. If you have watched some of my tutorials on YouTube or if you have been using my vocabulary lessons for ELL students that I also post on YouTube, you probably have noticed that I'm a huge fan of using PowerPoint to create my lessons. So let's take a look at my vocabulary lesson here and I will show you what I do with this with this, and how I use it in three different ways that really have made my life a lot easier. So in my vocabulary lessons, I really focus on allowing my students an opportunity not only to read and listen to me, but also to speak. So, so from the very first slide, I ask a question and I provide sentence starters for some scaffolding. I continue providing um, a lot of visuals. But then I slowly pick up the pace and add more sentences and more text, as well as context for students to figure out the meaning of new vocabulary and ideas. This really does a good job allowing students to read, speak, and listen. But of course, I want to extend this into more reading and more writing opportunities. So since March, I have been making um, interactive vocabulary sheets. And by interactive, I mean that the, these worksheets allow for students to drag and drop elements, um, uh, some graphics to show their responses instead of typing them up but also um, fillable or live worksheets where they can type up their responses. Um, like I said, I use the same PowerPoint. I usually duplicate it, so I have two copies. One uh, as an original uh, vocabulary lesson, and another one um, is a copy that I can play with to create my worksheets. Uh, step number one for me is to change page size so the pages look more like the actual uh, worksheet pages that your students are more accustomed to. So um, eight and a half by 11 is what we choose. And then we, this is very important, you choose scale down. Um, as you can see now, the element uh, size has been changed to fit the page without losing anything. Um, like I said, and you can see here in my finished product, uh, now all of this looks like a regular paper worksheet. This also allows you to maybe print them out if you want to print them out. So once I do, uh, take uh, step number one by changing the page set up, I start going through slides and choosing the questions. Maybe I want to keep some questions, I want to keep some visuals, or I delete uh, whole slides that I don't think I will need. Um, as you can see, this, this pro uh, lesson was 17 pages long, uh, but my worksheet packet is only seven pages, okay, actually six pages of worksheets here. Now, important step. If you're making drag and drop activities, you want to make sure that only the elements that you want them to move are movable. So the rest of it is not touchable, okay? Because if, if it is, students uh, can accidentally move these things around and also this uh, frustrates them because they maybe really just want to move this word but they keep tagging something else. And there's a bunch of tutorials on YouTube by wonderful teachers who uh, suggested taking a, a screenshot or saving as a picture the slide uh, you want to have as a background okay um, so I just did a screenshot here is a picture now on my desktop what I will do I will insert a new slide and understand where my <laughs> here's a new slide we'll get rid of the um, features that it came with and um, right click format background picture or texture fill, we are going to insert and we will insert the picture that I have just saved as a screenshot. Okay, um, right here. Okay, now I'm going to delete hide background graphics. Okay, so here it is. So here is uh, the same worksheet now saved as a background, as like as, as a picture. So none of this um, is uh, possible to move. I do have to say that this makes some features and words a little bit fuzzier, but it still works. Now, when I want to create features that I want them to move, all I do is double click and do whatever I need. If it's a text, I type up a text. If it's, for example, like an image here of a check mark, you can insert a check mark or you can use letter V for it. You just have to train your students to click and uh, drag. Okay, so this is one option. This is for uh, drag and drop, works great for your beginner students. 
Um, and then we also want to, our students to be able to type up their responses. Now, I used to save uh, the slides that I wanted to make fillable PDF documents. So I used to save them as a PDF and then take that PDF into such programs as PDF Escape, for example. And I still like doing it, but it's an extra step. Um, that uh, site would allow you for free to create um, text boxes. But instead of doing this, I also just take a screenshot of what uh, uh, worksheet I want to make fillable, use that as a background, and then on top of that create these um, text boxes. So I make them whatever size I need, then you click on it, and then you click on shape format, okay, and you can just like go as easy as this, and this fills it in for you and has a nice outline. So this way your students see right away where they need to type up their responses. I hope this helps. Please let me know if you have any questions and as usual if you have been doing this and this is just uh, this is insulting to you I apologize. I'm very excited <laughs> that you can use one presentation one lesson for three different purposes um, as a as a interactive vocabulary lesson and then as a uh, drag and drop worksheet and as a fillable worksheet so I wanted to share this. Have a good summer.